Nothing in life is more difficult than empathizing with the experience of our childhood. And I don't mean to recall it as a nostalgic or sentimental memory, or just having it define the course of your life, but in a genuine reflection on what we felt in those moments. In this story, she makes the first step to really start going back and figuring out how she felt. Or is she? One can easily look at this story as one that tells a somewhat common theme nowadays, of being tired of the busy city life and wanting to experience some time on a farm. And honestly, when I watched this movie for the first time three years ago, this is mostly how I took it in. But this is only a fraction of it. Another way one can view this story is her learning how she feels she behaved badly as a child, and how she has changed. But this is deceptive. In truth, in this beautifully animated movie, there is barely any change happening at all. After all, it's a story that only spans 10 days. But let's start from the beginning. Taiko is a 27-year-old woman who is taking a 10-day visit to the countryside and recalls it was something she wished she could do as a child. The traveling she had done when she was young was visiting a bathhouse, which quickly ended over an accident. She really wanted to travel after hearing her friends talk about their visits to relatives living in the countryside. It made her hope she could do something like that too. One can ask, why would she even desire this so much, to the point where it leaves her with such expectation and disappointment? It's easy to dismiss her need expressed here as a selfish desire to get what others have, but that's not true if you seriously try to empathize with her. This is a bit complex, since in this story, Taiko herself doesn't even do that. She seems to dismiss herself, but why would she? Well, it's very obvious when you look at the family environment she grew up in. As the youngest of three daughters, she seems to be getting lots of hand-me-downs, and is also often getting picked on. Taiko herself remembers how she often felt that she must have been adopted. That's how much of a black sheep she really was in this family. The support she got was very minimal. It seems everyone just thought she was annoying and needed something extra. But really, it's because she was never able to be a priority in the first place. She has a habit of being a picky eater, and this is something that upsets her mom a lot. In fact, she's so annoyed by it that even though Teiko seems to have a great talent at writing essays, as she brings home a great one from school, she says that she would prefer if she would just eat her food instead of having this talent. This is an awful kind of neglect in my view, and sadly, it is only one dream which she will have crushed in her life by the lack of support from her parents, who are supposed to be responsible to nurture and love her. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself again, so let's look at her experience after she has spent time in the farmland she is visiting. It seems to be something she greatly enjoys. At least, one can hardly say otherwise from the blinding smiles everybody throws around. When she arrives, she is being picked up by Toshio, who is a younger man that chose to give up on his office job to f and fulfill his dream of working in nature. She spends time with his family picking a kind of flower that is used for its pigments to create a red color, which among other things is used to make rouge. All this is mainly sold to the fancy girls who live in the city, marking a divide between the two regions and incomes. Teiko speaks of a myth, that the redness actually originates from the girls who pick those flowers. Since the flower has thorns, they would get hurt and the redness comes from the blood of those girls' hands. She pondered on the resentment these girls would feel towards the girls in the city, having to pick so many flowers, just for a tiny amount of rouge they would apply. Teiko seems to have an ability to really understand and empathize, but how come she seems to not be able to do so with herself? We can look further into how she was treated in her family. After she would fail to be good at dividing fractions in math class, she told Toshio how those who struggle with these in school actually end up having a harder life. Which is funny, because I also struggled with those at first. I ended up consulting the internet for help when I did. But sadly, she can only consult her sister, who doesn't treat her very kindly. Instead of finding support among each other from their unsupportive parents, her sister dramatizes Taiko's failure 
It even comes to the point where the mother blurts out that Taiko just isn't normal and is mortified after noticing that Taiko had overheard her. Quickly she tried to make it right by bringing up her excuse that she had a headache during the test. But of course, this is completely insincere and doesn't prove in the slightest that she really is on her side. The thing is, Taiko isn't stupid and actually is a very smart girl who asks great questions about why multiplying into fractions would reduce the total amount since after all, it is multiplied. She drew up a quick example with an apple and while her sister noticed that she actually asked an interesting question, could only point out how wrong it was. She runs into another situation with her family, where she would desire a new and personal handbag, but isn't getting one she likes, and once in protest, not even accept the hand-me-downs from her older sister. While one could again assume that she's just acting as a spoiled brat, unhappy with the bag she got because she's selfish, this completely misunderstands the nature of our being. The truth is, we all struggle to express our emotions, and the things we really desire often aren't able to be voiced out loud in a clear way at all, so we fixate on other things, just to feel like we are getting anything at all. And with a child, this is even more complicated, especially if the parents already struggle with it. When she protested that she wouldn't want to go out with her family, around the whole handbag drama, her father came in to check on her before they went and, instead of genuinely asking her about her feelings, just left her in the dust. Of course, this abandonment is terrible, but such a complicated one to untangle for a child, because really, this isn't about the handbag at all. This goes much, much deeper. The story obviously doesn't go into every trauma she experienced, but considering how emotionally dull her parents are, there must have been other situations of neglect. They don't understand their feelings at all, and the only thing her father can focus on, like a primitive robot, is that she isn't wearing any socks, and proceeds to slap her. It doesn't seem like he liked that he did that, and so, we see how unable this family is in expressing themselves in words about their emotions, without having them blow up first into regrettable situations. The gravity of their emotions is unacknowledged, they are disassociated from them, and their narrow perspective they have seems to be completely cemented. At one point during her time in nature, she tells Toshio and Naoko a story about how she was a good actress in a school play, even though she only had a tiny role since she was going to a school in a huge city like Tokyo. Her acting, though, was largely unappreciated. After she creatively adds to the script, the teacher asks her not to. This isn't a big deal though, because she knew she could add to the scene by adding a little wave, bringing in more of her creativity inside her to the stage. She was so great in her tiny role, that someone from a college came to their family home to ask if she could star in a play of theirs. The mother actually is supportive about this, which is great to hear, and Taeko is incredibly excited of the prospect of starring in a movie, acting with adults who also take it seriously. The whole family in fact is happy about this opportunity, except the guy who isn't even paying attention because he's so busy reading the newspapers, and simply denies her opportunity to finally grow her talents by saying that show business is bad people. This honestly was something I had a very hard time watching, and I felt devastated for her. I hardly know what kind of words I can use to express this in a calm and collected manner because it feels downright infuriating to me. Her talent for acting, of expressing herself in a creative manner that she clearly feels called to do, is unappreciated just so she could continue to keep up the act in her family, the only one they accept. That she is only capable of taking on an average job in life, and that she has to pretend to satisfy her lifeless dad that he loved her, in the ways she truly needed for her to grow into a mature person. The fears that he projects on the show business people that they could abuse his daughter is actually something that he himself is guilty of. He is the one exploiting her, and because he never learned in his own life how he was exploited by his parents probably as well, 
he misplaces that fear onto some outside force. Now, obviously I'm not saying show business is just good and she would be treated fairly there for her talents. Not at all. I've seen Perfect Blue. There obviously are bad things happening there. But one has to ask, how could she protect herself from that? I think one of the main ways he could have protected his daughter from predatory show business people is by actually loving her and supporting her to become a strong person. This would not leave her vulnerable to the manipulation of others. But of course, that is not how it is. Instead, he himself is the manipulator, abusing his power to keep his pawns in check, because he thinks himself king, with children and wife who have to be there to service him, since probably, once upon a time, he had been a lowly servant boy in service of a king and queen himself. Despite all this disappointment, Taiko finds a way to move forward, inspired by the children's show she watches. Inspired by something that has to do with anything but her family. With this she also bonds with Toshio, who also knows of these shows. Towards the end of her vacation, always having her smile on her face, she's being asked by the grandmother if she would perhaps stay with them and marry Toshio. This immediately puts her in a strange mood, almost like she's recalled into her past full of invasive and disrespectful people. Of course, this just seems like a simple suggestion, but hearing it from the tribe grandmother, it goes beyond that. Taiko's smile fades and the others try to get the grandmother to not put the pressure on her anymore. But the woman also might think it's a good thing, and also now puts it on Taiko, which she can't take anymore and she runs away. She feels like the smile she forces herself to show to the world always makes them misunderstand her, and probably prompted the grandma to ask her to stay with them. While on her own, she is suddenly haunted by a vivid apparition of Abe, a boy she knew from school. A poor and dirty boy, who says he wouldn't shake hands with her. In the rain, Tosha drives by and sees her, and is confused about her being in the rain all alone. He tells her to get in the car so she won't get wet, and she proceeds to not explain anything to him, but just tells him her story of this poor boy she saw from her past. She goes on and doesn't understand at all that Abe actually liked her, and that she naturally empathized with him after she saw him outside, being treated badly by his bum of a father, imitating his behavior of spitting on the floor and swaggering around. Really, she was like this poor boy too deep down, treated without worth in her family, turning into the black sheep of it. He reflected her deep down, and that's why she saw him reappear suddenly. After Toshio explained how Abe really felt towards her, the rain stops, and we see the full moon. She received a genuine reflection of her experience from him. She makes her way home, and the grandma reminds her of her suggestion to become what she desires because she needs more people to feed off from. Then, in the train, her childhood self and class appear. She didn't notice them at all at first, because she still is mostly emotionally disassociated from herself. But like a little hunch she's getting from them crowding around her, she decides for the first time to follow her impulse to do something that she wants herself, deep down. So, she turns around, with the cheers of all the children, calls up the family so Toshio can pick her up, takes the bus along with all the kids, and meets Toshio, who with an oopsie gets closer to her, and then, they drive off, and leave the children behind. Child Taeko is left with the same face she has after she has been forced to swallow things she doesn't want to before, and fades into darkness. After finally having made the decision to listen to her true self, she abandons her true self again. She made the decision to not continue her life in Tokyo, with the boring job she got pressured into by being good at school as expected from her parents, who were very upset when she wasn't. Only to drive off into a life where she would live in the shadow of Toshio's dream. If you take the emotions of life seriously, 
This movie is a very accurate depiction of a sad reality, which was portrayed in incredible detail. Her pain is still somewhere inside, ready to explode. After all, she swallowed so much of her parents' garbage, shown sorta of symbolically in the moment where they are trying to eat a hot new exotic fruit, but deciding it was actually bad. This is of course a premature judgement, because the pineapple simply was just not ripened. And to not make it go to waste, Taeko forces herself to eat it. She is the only one who shows any readiness to absorb something that has yet not matured, instead of just bombarding herself with some false reality of a matured existence. Though, as we saw in the end, she leaves the Taeko who has yet to mature inside her behind. There was a part where she talks about realizing she had been in a chrysalis, a caterpillar in the process of becoming a butterfly, and that in the early years of working at her job, she felt that the women were much more in their butterfly phase, much more cheerful than the guys. But she questions that, wondering if there was even any reason for them to have flapped their wings at all. She says that maybe she is in another chrysalis phase, as in puberty, but doesn't continue this line of thought and then goes to sleep. To this I have to say that I think she hadn't been in a chrysalis stage at all yet. Sure, puberty is a sort of physical chrysalis stage, but do we really evolve that much by just physically becoming adults? I think not much truly changes, and the reality of growing our wings is something that is actually barely existing in our species. I think we are a species of caterpillars who convince ourselves and each other that this is all there is. Her steps toward empathizing with her childhood, at least showing a tiny spark of it, is the way to the actual path of growing her wings, which naturally nobody wants to take, because transformation is a scary and painful process. Though going through it really does open up heaven on the inside. Another sort of symbolic moment was when she became unconscious in the bathhouse. If I try to stretch my interpretation, I would say this reflects what happened in her family. She drowned in the unconsciousness of her family environment and became part of the sleeping way her family lives. Not truly living at all, but living a pretend life where they try to forget their emotions and not acknowledge the waters they are all submerged in. These waters have to be entered in order to transform, and when one does acknowledge its existence, we can be able to come to terms with it. I think the most mature person in this whole story was Rie, who is able to laugh off the teasing from the boys about having a period, because her mother told her that having a period is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. In contrast, Taiko's family never even mentions the existence of a period at all. I could say more about the root causes of the behavior of the characters in this story, but the bottom line really just is that one can only learn to respect children if one is also respected as a child, and if you had not been respected as one, you are now forced to show that respect to yourself as an adult. Maybe then, children would naturally respect each other, if they were raised by people who respected their own childhood self. And I hope to see this more in the world one day. I think the moment where she touches fingers with Naoko, and it portrays it in a strangely cosmic way, you could say this is also what is happening in her life. She's making real contact with the younger version of herself, but just a slight one, just by touching their fingertips. But ultimately, there is still a strong contrast between the two, her adult self with her fake grin, and her child self with her confused expression she makes when she feels left behind, like in the moments where she has to swallow her emotion, as mentioned previously. To make this not a too negative essay, I have to say that I thought this movie was worth watching. It was fundamentally the emotional realism that is depicted that convinced me. Although I'm not a fan of how the characters interpret themselves, I wonder if all the emotional nuance of her childhood scenes are also depicted in the manga this movie is based on, or if this was the genius at Ghibli doing that. Also, when it comes to the ending, I think one could hope that their life together turns out good for each other. I can just hold on to the wish that they would love each other fairly and open their hearts, and make sure to not compromise things that deep down they don't want to so that their relationship could even be a catalyst for them figuring out what they truly want. 
I think if this story was much more of a fairy tale and less a realistic one, I could be okay with a sort of happily ever after attitude. But I really cannot cherish a delicate hope like that after having been smacked in the face with a bunch of soul-crushing reality, so I have to be critical. I think this was one of the more strange essays I made. Because really, what I did before is mostly point out how I think the characters in the previous animes were inspiring to me. But in this story, where none of the characters are particularly inspiring, which probably is mostly just because the whole story took place within 10 days, I had to focus more on the downsides of it, and didn't want to paint it pretty, like so many people seem to just take it. Like I said, I had no clue about the emotional gravity in this movie when I first watched it around 3 or 4 years ago, so this truly surprised me. All in all, this has been difficult to make for me, and I hope to have elucidated something important. Because I have not seen much mention of this perspective I bring to this movie out there. And as we continue to grow and become more emotionally in touch with ourselves, we learn to respect the existence of what was left behind inside us, and the meaning of that painful experience. Because no matter how long we put off what we have experienced, these feelings will never die.